Hello and welcome back to Berserker and we are here fighting the Western Empire. Now they so dramatically outnumber us at this point because obviously we've just taken Vostrum and there really isn't any unit in here really to defend so that's obviously a bit of a problem but we are getting a peace proposal that I will be accepting this time around even though Personally, I would like to see more in regards to negotiations and maybe making the terms of the peace slightly more in our favor because, I mean, li literally, look at this. War reparations of 10? <laughs> 10 dinars. Really? 10 dinars? I think that's a bit too little, you know, for me personally. I think that's a bit too little. I mean, you can see here, are they even giving me anything per day? No. They're not giving anything per day either. Anyway, my defensive, um, well, should we say my war strategy is going to be more defensive now so that um, my parties generally will follow that. Hopefully, they'll not get themselves killed or anything like that. Anyway, Sesta Dime Castle is actually under siege at the moment as well, as you can see right there. And I was actually hoping, because I saw the message, but I was unable to click on the little pop-up before the peace agreement came through. And I was thinking to myself, hopefully that's a Southern Empire vassal, because then we can prevent Sestadime Castle from being taken. But obviously that is not the case. It is indeed a Western Empire vassal, so we're just going to have to deal with it and see what happens. And if they do take Sestadime Castle, that's really not that big a deal, I suppose. Really not uh, not too difficult to deal with. But look at this. He's actually going in here. Mr. Garios himself. He is indeed the leader of the Western Empire. So I guess it is to be expected that he would be very much wanting to do some damage to us right here. Because he's, see he's seeing the opportunity, you know. He's seeing the opportunity of an enemy leader of a faction. Obviously, we are the leader of our own faction here. And he is thinking to himself, oh, you know what? I'm going to teach these young whippersnappers a lesson. And that's exactly what he's going to do. That's what he's going to try to do, at least. And my two-handed axe and myself are hopefully going to try and prevent that from happening. Anyway, this is going to be one of those times, once again, where I assume the AI is not really going to work as intended. Or, should we say, they're not going to work as, as well as they could. And, wait a minute, did they actually build a siege tower? They haven't... Okay, they haven't built a siege tower. That's kind of interesting. I wonder whether the AI knows that they don't really use siege towers that well, and they've now decided to stop using them, because I don't see any... No, no, they, they did not build a siege tower. They have only built a battering ram. And personally, I think we could probably kill the battering ram really, really fast. But unfortunately, it seems to me like this particular catapult right here, or the mangonel as they call it, is not aiming at that. And instead is aiming at a bunch of archers, which I suppose is okay. I think that's fine to aim at those guys because, you know, it's always a good idea to thin out the enemy archers a little bit. But generally, I would much prefer to see them firing on the battering ram because... Otherwise, you know what's going to happen then. If they don't have, you know, if they don't have the battering ram, they're just going to go up the uh, the siege ladders and everything. And the siege ladders are going to be very easy for us to defend, or at, at the very least, now they're going to be easy to defend because they have just taken so long to get themselves into any kind of good positioning, and it's uh, it's taken a long time for our units to get into good defensive positions as well. And if they had just taken advantage of the ladders immediately then we probably would have seen many many casualties on our part but we're not seeing that right now that is for sure especially considering they are mainly focusing on the battering ram and once again they are attempting to do something here you know i really wish that they had a bit of an easier time of aiming these things i mean look at this that, that i mean that was a pretty good hit right there but if i were to use this myself which i'm gonna try actually right now and you can see here that you see that little um you see that little thing moving back and forth on the red area on the mangonel itself that's how it uh, determines what range is actually going to be used and now personally i feel yeah i mean in the um what should we say in the benefits or should we say in the interest that's it in the interest of realism 
then yeah, I think that's definitely a good thing to not have any kind of indicator or crosshair or anything like that. I think that's a good thing. But personally, I feel like it should show you a little bit, a, a, maybe a slight guide where the uh, where the projectile is actually going to fly. Because for me, I find that insanely difficult. Like you're going to need to try multiple times and just have a trial and error kind of mindset in regards to dealing with the manganelles. And in my opinion, I think that's a bit too time consuming. And especially in a siege, you're going to waste a lot of ammo as well, especially if you are a human player in comparison to the AI, of course, because the AI already knows how to use it. And you would expect them to know how to use it, of course. But uh, I'm just saying, maybe it would be cool to have a bit of a, a targeting guide or something like that. So that it's just a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a assistance, I guess. Because otherwise, it's just impossible to know where it's going to go. Unless you are one of those people that is just extremely good at using the catapult. I know, I'm probably going to get a bunch of people, you know, saying to me now in the comments, Hey, that's not, that's not cool. That's not cool, man. And so on. And yeah, sure. But it could just be an option. You know? It could just be an option in the, uh, in the menus to uh, change it up and you could disable it if you wanted to. So if you want a more realistic experience, then you could do that, you know? I think that would be pretty cool because as it stands right now, I personally find manganelles and catapults and things like that extremely difficult to use. I don't think the ballista needs a guide or anything like that. I don't think it needs a, um, you know, a crosshair or anything like that. I think it's easy enough to use the ballista as it is because it's basically a straight line almost. But when it comes to these kinds of trebuchet-like weapons and, uh, you know, projectile-based, you know, projectile-based weapons, it's pretty difficult, in my opinion. So it would be kind of nice to see a little, I don't know, little, uh, I, I don't even know what to call it, but it's just like a, uh, like a little graphic that is on either the ground or just shows the travel trajectory of the um, of the rocks that you're firing at the opponent. I feel like that could be really fun. And um, that would help a lot. Uh, that would help a lot. That would really, really help a lot. And it would make a big difference to how much fun you would actually have using these weapons as well. Because as it stands right now, personally for me, I've only had, what? I don't know, five, six, seven times maybe that I have decided to try and use a catapult. And you know why? <laughs> Because it's insanely difficult and, and it basically makes me feel like I'm wasting my time by being on this thing instead of going and doing something else. Like, for example, me standing here right now, would you rather me stand here or would you rather me have fun on a catapult? Well, you'd probably rather me be on a catapult if I could actually hit stuff with it. But as it stands, I would just basically have the most frustrating experience known to man and we would probably not hit anything because it's just too difficult for me. Oh, look at these guys. They're literally flying all over the place. That is fantastic. I love that. Come on. Hello there. I will murder you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, could you Could you just... I, I don't even know what's actually going on with these guys at the moment. Because is the... Um, is, the is the battering ram destroyed already? I'm actually not entirely sure. How many kills have we gotten so far, by the way? I have no idea. It would be quite funny if we were to have, I don't know, 100 kills or something, because this guy has, what, 750 units or something like that? And I'm going to look at the end, so we're not going to look right now, because I think it would be quite fun for us to try and guess how many, how many kills I've gotten so far, but usually in these kinds of sieges, um, it's kind of... It's kind of easy to rack up kills, uh, you know, in, the, in this way at least. Because, I mean, you can see what I'm doing right now. It's so, so easy for me to get kills. I mean, I can basically kill most enemies in one hit anyway. And uh, it's just super simple to do that. I'm hopeful for one of those really, really funny jetpack moments again where I hit the guy in the head and then all of a sudden he's just woof and he just goes boosting into the air. He's, he's the next orbital satellite around the planet. Sounds like a good idea. But yes, that's the uh, that's the kind of thing that would be quite fun. Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether I should just tell my people to charge in at this point. Oh, I, I looked. Oh, I didn't. You know what? Okay, fine. What's your guess? 
I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess around 60. 70? 75. How many did I get? How do I see that? <gasps> what? I literally. Okay, I, okay, I know I, I looked before, but I really did not see because I was actually looking at the main numbers at the top there and I couldn't actually see my, my own name. And that might be a coincidence, but I literally have 76 kills. I have no idea how that was even possible, but okay. I actually thought I'd killed many more than that, to be honest, but I thought I would have a bit of a conservative estimate there and just, um, should, should we say, err on the side of caution a little bit because I thought to myself, ah, no, there's no way I would have been able to kill, you know, 100 units, even though it would have been pretty fun for me to be able to do that, but oh well, never mind, never mind. Okay, so what we're going to do is, <laughs> apparently I'm going to fall off the stairs. Yeah, that's what I do. Thank you. And, oh, these things have already been destroyed. Oh, okay, I had no idea. Let's tell everyone to charge then. I did not know that they had already destroyed these because these enemies are not even attempting to go into the main gate. Which is kind of weird. I would have expected them to go into the main gate almost immediately as soon as it's been destroyed, which it has. And uh, they decided not to, so it's kind of strange. Anyway... I'm very much hoping now that we have declared peace with the Southern Empire, we'll, we will have a much easier time of, um, shall we say, extending our reach, extending our territory and so on. Oh, I love this two-handed axe. I really do. I would love to be able to make a better one. So that's what I'm going to try and do now. I'm going to try and continue looking around for uh, new axe parts and things like that. And I think we're going to be heading towards Sturgeon territory, so I might have the opportunity to look around some of their marketplaces as well. And, um, oh yeah, yeah, I think actually someone mentioned in the comments that when you smelt weapons, there's always a chance that you can get parts from that particular weapon, no matter whether it, it, it says that or not. Now, here's the thing, okay, I'm using a, a mod called Chaos's Tweaks, and basically what that does is that lets you know if there are any additional parts available from certain weapon types or certain weapons specifically, you know, so, for example, one-handed axe of Sturgeon, you know, Sturgeon making or whatever, that has three parts, for example, and then if you smelt that, then you get those three parts. That's how Chaos's Tweaks works, so it's less of a random chance. Now, I'm not entirely sure if that random chance is still implemented, even though Chaos's Tweaks already has a, a system that kind of allows you to unlock pretty much everything however you want it, you know, so basically it's not random anymore and it's more a case of finding those specific weapons and then smelting them. So I thought I'd just sort of clarify that a little bit and um, just let you know that that's, that's what's going on there because sometimes um, I receive helpful comments like that and I really want to say, hey, thank you so much, you know, because obviously I, I already know that, but it's just a case of maybe you just don't realize that I have that mod installed and I just wanted to express my gratitude for that because yeah you are correct you are 100% correct about that and I would love to be able to have that be a thing but I don't know whether that is still the case even though I have this mod installed so I, I do appreciate it nevertheless though so anyway let's see if I can maybe um, murder the rest oh hello there no 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 leave me alone sir Okay, yeah, these uh, these Manavliatons are doing so much damage to me right now, but thankfully I seem to be surviving amazingly enough. Ow. <laughs> I seem to be surviving amazingly enough, he says, as he gets absolutely murdered. Okay, let me jump out here. Ooh, that was a lot of damage. See, now that's that's the kind of damage I'm going to take without the, uh, the full damage perk. It's actually pretty hilarious. Ah, uh, I was hopeful that I'd be able to do more damage here. Uh, yeah, the AI is sometimes so incredibly good at defense. It's it's very frustrating at times when they are just so good that it is very difficult to get past. There we go. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's the kind of thing that can happen to me very easily, by the way, because I know that some people have said in the in the past, in the last, I don't know, 15, 10 episodes or something like that, that I'm generally quite good at defense. Okay, so now here's the thing. That is a that is a complete facsimile. That is, <laughs> there there is no way 
that I'm that good at defense. It's literally just a case of me attacking them before, um, before they attack me. And even if I am able to get a block off or a, a parry or something like that, it is sheer luck. It is sheer luck that I am able to do that. I mean, yeah, okay, I'm much better than I used to be when I first started playing the game. Because, well, yeah, you do, yeah I mean, you don't even... Yeah, you, you know, you know. If you've seen my first ever series of Bannerlord, then you'll know that I did take quite a bit of time to get a bit more acquainted with how the new weapons acted in combat. Because I know a lot of people say, Oh, you played, uh, you played Warband for you know, nine years or eight years or however long I, I played it, right? I know a lot of people say, why are you so bad at Bannerlord? Well, it, I mean, that's the point. It's it's, it's actually a different, it's a, it's a different game. It's a different game. Uh, it, it is a different game, but obviously it's, it's set in the same world and the way that the combat works is so incredibly different that I was just having difficulties acclimatizing myself to it. So obviously that's a bit of a... You know, that's a bit of a, a reason why. Um, but you just got to also bear in mind that I am not the best. <laughs> you should know that. Yes, you should know that by now. But yeah, that's my point. That's the reason why even though, let, let's say you're, you're playing a game from 10 years ago or whatever, and then that particular developer or someone else comes out with a game that is relatively, uh, you know, from from the same franchise or from a, a similar franchise or from a spin-off or something like that, and the gameplay is relatively similar in the in the way that it works, but it's ten years advanced. So obviously, the the the, the game beforehand that you've been playing for thousands of hours, it's going to be completely different to the way that the 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 more modern one works, you know. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Anyway, we're going to take all these people prisoner, because that is what we do. Thank you very much. We'll take them all prisoner. And, uh, oh, so many people. Oh, yes. I like it. Very nice indeed. And now I will be taking all of these. Oh, yeah. By the way, by the way. Mm. I, uh, I looked at my speed. Yeah. I looked at my speed on the world map, and I thought to myself, what's going on? I am literally having a herd deficit bonus. Um, or shall we say penalty, not bonus, of 1.4 or something like that? Yeah, I was having like a speed deficit of 1.4, which is phew, absolutely insane. So I thought to myself, okay, what's going on here? And then I looked and I had over 500 Imperial Chargers. Yeah. And that is all thanks to the... Um, Oh yeah, I should probably reset that real quick. That is all thanks to the wonderful roguery skill that we have, I assume. That is the only thing that I can think of that is actually causing that to be such a big uh, contributor to my um, to my herd herd penalty, and uh, and so that I was moving much slower than I uh, otherwise could have, and um, yeah, so I'm gonna need to keep an eye on that because as you can no doubt see. Already, I have 241 Imperial Chargers again. Which is kind of insane in itself. Anyway, I'm going to probably just sell these prisoners straight back to the opponent. And there you go. We got six skill points in Roguery and we are now at 250, which is amazing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the character screen. And I'm going to take a look. All right. Increased speed damage bonus. Well, this is pretty much a no-brainer. Not because of the speed damage bonus, even though that is actually pretty significant. But it is the 2% more damage with two-handed weapons. Even though you may think to yourself, ah, oh, 2%? Ah, oh, that's kind of meh, isn't it? Yeah, it is kind of meh. But think about every single person in my army that has a two-handed weapon right now. There's a lot of them. So 2% is really a pretty big deal. So we're going to be taking dash and slash. Thank you very much. All right. So what else do we want to go for? Do we want to go for some more steward skill? Probably not. Charm is looking okay right now. Engineering is looking okay as well. Let's increase our thrown weapon proficiency. It's about time that I've done that. And I know a bunch of you have been talking about that in the comments. And don't worry. I haven't forgot about throwing skill. I was just trying to maximize the gains that we were getting from other things. And I generally don't tend to use thrown weapons that much anyway so i guess it doesn't make too much difference but still anyway i'm gonna look for an empire companion here if i can if i'm lucky enough then hopefully i will find one 
yes. Empire. Fantastic. Yes. Join me. Join me, miss. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's go and manage this. And then she can become the governor. That is great. Okay. Very cool. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to upgrade our forces. And then we're going to head into the trade screen. Because you can see here already I have a 0.7 herd deficit so i'm actually going to get rid of a bunch of these uh, 0 0.54 or uh, really still i mean come on that, uh, it's, it's, it's terrible isn't it absolutely terrible okay 0 0.32 do i have any others that are really dramatic not particularly i guess we'll just do a couple more 0 0.2 0 0.11 that should be absolutely fine and then what I could do technically, if, if I wanted to, I, this is never going to happen in a million years. But what I could do is I could continue to sell um, sell my gear to these people here. And it would be so much money. I would be gaining so much money. And uh, it's actually kind of uh, kind of crazy, really. I was going to say insane again. But no, we, we should probably not say that all the time. Because let's face it, I am saying that way too often. Anyway, point is... It is just ludicrous, the amount of money that you can make um, with roguery skill being at such a high rank. And I thought to myself uh, when I first, you know, thought about initially leveling up roguery skill, I was kind of a bit in two minds about it. I thought to myself, oh, is it is it going to be that useful? You know, is it going to be that good? Yeah, it actually turns out that it is really good. And um, I wouldn't have expected that, to be honest. Anyway. Rebels in Ortengard have risen against their lord, as you might expect. And let's go over to Marinia Castle. There's only 88 units in there. And we'll see if we can just take it back real fast. And I don't know whether Sesterdime Castle has been taken. Yes, Sesterdime Castle has been taken. As you can see, Garios has awarded it to someone. I guess that doesn't really matter too much. Hello. They're engaging, right? Yeah. They're engaging us. Okay, we're going to have to leave. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I was actually hoping that I'd be able to run this way, but no. Okay. Well, this might be somewhat problematic. Where are they going to go when they turn around? That is the one thing I need to find out. Let's just fight these brigands real fast. There we go. Uh, I'm not going to take any prisoners right now, even though I would like to. And we're just going to donate all of those things for additional experience. I want to try and level up these tier 3 units as fast as I can. And now let's see. Nielsen, go away, sir. Go away. No, no, no. Don't run in there. You absolute imbecile. Why? What are you doing here? I have no idea what he's doing. But anyway, um, we should probably take a look at the map real quick. Okay. So, wait a minute. Did I take Poros before? I didn't take Poros before, right? I don't think so. I don't think I owned Poros before. I don't think that is the case. So at least I haven't lost... Have I? Did I Did I lose that? I'm actually not entirely sure now. That is really, really bad. Okay. Well, let's just take a quick look at the garrison here. I was actually hoping that there might be some bear units in here, but there isn't. Uh, that is to be expected, isn't it? Oh, well. Never mind. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, where, where is she actually going? Or where is he going? Where? Uh, I can't tell yet. I need to go a little bit closer. Okay. Besieging Vostrom. Okay. That is what I expected. So, what we're going to do is we're going to move around. And because they are so slow, we are going to get there first. <laughs> Can you see what I'm attempting to do here? Oh, yes. I'm attempting to get there way before them. Thank you very much. And there we have it. All right. So let's wait here for some time. See what happens. No doubt they are going to appear. There they are. And I would wholeheartedly assume that they are going to... Yep, they are indeed trying again. Very strange. I've got to say, very strange for them to do this once again. And look at this. Edwin of the Wolfskins has been taken prisoner by Nielsen, which is fantastic. Really nice to see him actually doing something like that. And uh, he's leveling up his steward skill. We're leveling up our leadership skill as well. And I would like to get to 150 if at all possible. That would be quite nice. 
And, uh, oh yeah, that reminds me. I do need to go and I need to find some more of my companions because a couple of my companions are still sort of just chilling out somewhere. They're relaxing in Epicrotia and some other places and they need to create their own parties. But I actually need to go there in person to be able to do that. I can't just tell them to make the party out of nowhere because if I were to go here and then click create this then they're just going to be like oh you know this hero is busy for example and that's obviously not particularly good so I'm going to need to do something about that and we are now clan tier 6 by the way as well so that's that's pretty good anyway we're going to be defending Vostrum once again but do bear in mind that even though we are being kind of locked down pretty hard here that's not actually that big a deal because if you think about it from a uh, war of attrition standpoint, it is pretty much just weakening them, you know? It's just weakening them for our inevitable offensive push. And this is usually how it goes for the AI. They usually decide to do these kinds of things. And then because they've decided to do this in this fashion where they just run in with separate armies and they don't work together, they are probably going to be unable to take this again and then we have the opportunity to counterattack. and counterattacking is very very useful can i please use this now okay let's see really i cannot believe i missed actually i think i can <laughs> i think i can believe that Again, though, really? Okay, well, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna, oh, ow! Are you serious? I'm just gonna wait here a little bit. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Are you, you absolute? Okay, there we go. I hit someone. I leveled my bow skill by a massive amount. Did you see that? Look at that. Look at that bow skill increase right there. Look at that. 5 skill points, 3 skill points, 11 skill points. Can you imagine if I actually had better bow skill? It would probably be really damaging. I'm just going to allow my forces just to take over the ballista because it seems to me like I'm just getting, you know, death by a thousand cuts at that point, which is really not something I want to experience. Thank you very much. It's I've, I've had that happen way too often in the past as well, where even in Warband, I would have a relatively strong character in the form of, you know, Iceni or something in, in Prophecy of Pendor. And, you know, in that I would have probably some of the best gear possible. Because you can get magical armor and stuff like that in that. Um, but yeah, then I would literally be running around and all these all these enemies... I was about to call them mobs. <laughs> there is see enough. Ah, uh, yes. Anyway. All these enemies would be doing, I don't know, 5, 10 damage to me. And I would have a lot of HP at that point. Like 140 or whatever. And uh, yeah, it would basically be a death by a thousand cuts. Because in the end, I would eventually, you know, succumb to those wounds. And it would just be a very sad state of affairs. But, you know, it happens. It happens. And um, yeah, I don't really want that to happen again. Alright, so I'm going to open this. Mainly because... Yeah, they are going to hit this. Mainly because what I'm going to... Are you? You? <laughs> okay. I see how it is. Whoever closed the gate is about to get absolutely smacked in the face by this wonderfully large... Two did I really just injure my own gate? Yes, I think I did. I did damage it. That is hilarious. Okay, I'm going to die. Um, yep. I am... So dead. Oh, am I? <gasps> I might survive. Oh, I lived. Oh, now I'm going to die from some other random piece of damage. What do you bet? Why can't I... Why can't I hit that guy? Did you see that? I couldn't hit him while he was putting up the ladder. That's really weird. Oh, and then I got... Ah, uh, you know, it's those ki it's one of those sieges. It's one of those sieges for me, where I'm literally thinking to myself, ah oh, yes, I, I, I can probably stand here and do okay, and not take too much damage, and then, boom, I get myself absolutely murdered in every single respect, which is great. Oh, so lovely, so lovely. Anyway, at least I do have RTS camera, and that allows me to take over one of my, one of my units. 
And I think now that the main gate is open, I'm probably going to tell my people just to charge in at this point. I don't think we really need to hold back against these opponents. I think uh, the, the army previously was much more difficult. So I'm just going to tell them to charge. And then we'll see what I can do here as well. And I had such a, a lot of fun escaping from the uh, the little trap that I got myself into as well. But, ah, uh, well, never mind. I guess it is quite fun to be in those situations and try and escape from them in the first place. Gotta say, I don't like this... I don't like this sword one bit. I feel like this sword is really bad. Is it just me? Maybe I need to... You know what I you know what I need to do? I need to change the gear of some of my stuff, some of my some of my units that is, because I'm th I'm thinking to myself that they're really not not very well equipped. I think their armor is good, but I think their weapons are kind of lackluster in many many different ways. So that's definitely something that I need to look at. I mean, just look at how much damage I'm able to deal. I'm not sure whether that is. Is that just due to their, their their low proficiency? It might be due to their low proficiency, even though they have 240 and two-handed, I believe. Which is pretty good. I mean, if you think about it, having 240 in a particular skill is pretty much the highest you can get as a noble unit without turning off, you know, skill caps and so on. And obviously, if I did that, that would make everything very imbalanced indeed. And we're already doing fantastically well, so... I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me and not really um, having a good time with their skill skill levels in comparison to my own characters. Because maybe he just has so much better skills that uh, it really makes a huge difference. Ah well. I think what I'm going to do though is I will be switching the uh, noble noble line. I will switch the noble line to a. Mm, probably a two-handed two users. I mean, two-handed axe users, shall we say. I think that's going to be a really good idea because generally I think that destroying shields is really important and having the ability to destroy shields really fast is going to be so, so useful, especially in these situations where a lot of people are spawning in. Look at all these guys with their shields. Really annoying to deal with. <laughs> he says as he gets slashed once again. Yeah, it's great. Okay, let's see. Uh, can I... Can I get a Bear Zerker? I wouldn't mind trying out a Bear Zerker. See if I can maybe get one of those. Why do I... Question. Why do I get all the Imperial units first? And then I get all the Super Bears and so on and so forth. Why? I don't know. Is it because they're a part of the garrison? Maybe it's because they're a part of the garrison. That might make sense. Because they are in order then. But still... That's kind of frustrating in itself. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to try out one of these guys. Okay. Oh, no. I, I actually did get a, a, a noble super bear by the looks of things. Okay, well, let's just do some damage. Murder them. Yes. There's no way I could defend that for that long. That is unfortunate. Ah, seems like most of my people are not even bothering to charge. Okay, charge. Not entirely sure why they stopped charging, to be honest. Okay, let's just speed things up. And that is going to finish up the last remaining units in the keep. And there you go. The rest of them are actually retreating right now. So that's really nice. Anyway, we did end up losing only 10 units, which is super nice. And that is going to really help us out in pushing forward and expanding our territory even further. And these kinds of things are going to happen. These kinds of eventualities where you're, you know, inevitably going to have to defend against armies and things like that. They have to be done to be able to get to the next stage of your kingdom's development. Because I know, hey, you know what? Some people might not like might not like siege defenses, but you know, generally, I think that it is a um, 
a necessity in many respects. So let's just put these guys in there, and then I will take the remaining prisoners and sell them at the tavern. There we go. There's another three skill points for me right there. And I think we can pretty much just leave Vostrum the way it is now. I don't think there are any more really large armies around that the Western Empire has. If they do, then they are welcome to try and um, <laughs> and take Vostrum, I guess. And I'll just see what I can do about that. But uh, yeah, at the moment, Thorios Castle is being under siege. I think they're going to have some difficulties taking that, but we'll see. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.